What's up YouTube? Have you ever wondered what the best alternatives are to Adobe InDesign? Well that is what we are here to talk about today. All right, so this is probably the most difficult video in this series to make because you know we've already talked about what the best alternatives are to Adobe Photoshop and to Adobe Illustrator. And those videos were fairly straightforward to make because there are very clear alternatives to those programs, programs that really closely approximate what they do. InDesign on the other hand is a little bit different because InDesign really, in a way that the other two don't, dominates the industry of publishing and printing and has very, very specific requirements for a lot of the things people in those industries are producing. And those are not industries that I am an expert in. And that means that it's hard for me to make a recommendation to somebody working in the publishing and printing industry about alternatives to Adobe InDesign because I don't understand all the requirements that are there. But I do welcome comments from those working in printing and publishing in order to help us understand what the alternatives might be or why you might not be able to use alternatives to Adobe InDesign. So I'm going to take this from the perspective of a designer using Adobe InDesign design and the alternatives that I found for using it for things like layout design for things like producing flyers and brochures and posters and that kind of thing but make sure that you do drop in the comments and comment with your perspective on this because that's really important in all of my videos but it's especially important in this video so let's go ahead and get started here for designers I think the best alternative to Adobe InDesign is Affinity Publisher this is hands down my favorite program and the one that I use the most. For the things I would use InDesign for, Affinity Publisher can do basically all of them. And I've gone through that in the tools video, which you can see right here. But also that Studio Link feature in Affinity Publisher that allows me to bring in the features of Affinity Photo and Affinity Designer, which you've already seen are my favorite alternatives to Photoshop and Illustrator, really makes it so seamless and actually makes it a lot better than Adobe InDesign in many ways because I don't have to round trip through other programs to make edits. And that just makes it so much easier on my life as a designer. So Affinity Publisher, one-time purchase, $50 for Mac, and PC. That's my number one recommendation. But now let's get into some of the other options if Affinity Publisher isn't going to do it for you. The first one is going to be for you open source folks, whether you're just looking for a free program or you use Linux, you're going to want to look at Scribus. Scribus is a great program. It falls in line with other programs that we've talked about, GIMP and Inkscape, but it doesn't integrate closely with those programs. But it is open source, which means it is going to have a higher degree of difficulty when you are learning it and a higher degree of technical skill in order to install, update, and use it. I did use Scribus for a long time before Affinity Publisher came out and I can say it really is a robust program that is quite useful from a layout design perspective. Of course its interface is a little dated as is the case with most open source programs but I would definitely look into that. Of course especially if you're on Linux Scribus is going to be kind of your bread and butter for layout design. But of course it also runs on PC and on Mac as well. Next let's go ahead and talk about web-based programs. There are two web-based programs that I think could be alternatives to Adobe InDesign depending on what you were doing with InDesign. If you were doing pretty simple design of like single page or two page documents maybe like flyers handouts brochures that kind of thing you can definitely go ahead and use Canva Canva is not going to be nearly as robust as any of these other programs that we've talked about Canva is really kind of aimed at beginners people who need to do some design work but don't want to learn all of the design stuff that's really what Canva is aimed at it has a free version online but there's also of course a premium version that you can pay for that comes with more features and more like assets that you can use in your design it can be good although it isn't a fully robust design program where Canva really starts to fall short is in multi-page documents where things get really long things like books or magazines or newspapers Canva just doesn't have the ability to deal with those in very effective or efficient ways go ahead and check out Canva if you are a beginner and you just want to kind of get your feet wet in the design world or you just need to do some pretty simple documents and you just online of course, this is a great program for those of you using Chromebooks if you want to be able to do some design work from your Chromebook. The other program is called LucidPress, and LucidPress acts more like a traditional layout design program, more like InDesign or Affinity Publisher, but it's not super full featured. The features are a little bit lean and it's definitely aimed more at developing documents for the web than it is at developing documents for print. It has some features for print, but it doesn't have a lot of the robust features like placing a document inside of another document or something like that. The free version is pretty limited. So it is limited to, I think, three documents and each of those documents can only be three pages long. So if you just need to do something quick and easy and you need something free to do it with, LucidPress can be a great option for you. Or if you're just trying to learn your way around things like publication and layout design, you could start learning inside of LucidPress without spending the money on Adobe InDesign. But you will quickly run into those 
limitations and kind of bump up against that paywall, at which point it seems like you're better off paying for something else than Lucid Press. Now, Lucid Press does have a free education account. So if you are a student or a teacher, that's something you might want to look into because that does have more options and might be a viable use for you. But again, once you start paying, I'd really just steer you towards a free publisher because that's going to be a lot more robust and be able to do a lot more of the things that you need it to do. Plus, it's part of a suite of apps, which makes it easier to handle. All right, so those are kind of my recommendations, but before moving on to the end of this video, we really need to talk about a couple of other programs. The first one is Quark Express. Quark Express is not something I've ever used, so I'm not really in a position where I can talk about it, but it was used by the publishing industry very heavily for a long time from what I gather. And really InDesign kind of replaced Quark Express in a lot of print shops and publishers. So it's still available and there are still places that are using it, but I can't speak to it. And it does seem like not a great alternative to Adobe InDesign because it's an expensive subscription based model as well. And so at that point, you're probably just better off using Adobe InDesign so that you're getting the Creative Cloud and access to the entire suite of Adobe apps, which will be probably more helpful for you than just having Quark Express. But again, I've never used Quark Express, so if Quark Express is something that you're using all the time and you really think it has advantages over InDesign, please go ahead and drop in the comments and let us know that. Okay, and the last program that we need to talk about but that I don't recommend is Microsoft Publisher. I have used Microsoft Publisher, I don't like Microsoft Publisher, and I really think it's unfortunate that if they chose to name their awesome program the same thing as Microsoft's really subpar program. Microsoft Publisher is not good. I would recommend any of the other apps on this list before Microsoft Publisher. I just find it to be really kind of a bloated piece of software that lacks features, which I know sounds funny that it's bloated and lacks features, but that's really what I find with Microsoft Publisher. Really, the only reason that you might be using it is if you are on a PC, you already own Microsoft Office, Publisher came with your Microsoft Office package, and you just need to throw something together really quickly. But I would try and steer you away from that. That might come up when you search desktop publishing apps on the internet, but just stay away from Microsoft Publisher. As we're closing out this video, there's just one more thing that I really wanted to mention, and that is the total lack of iPad apps on this list. Currently, there are no iPad apps in desktop publishing that I have found to be really useful. I've looked at kind of what's out there, and none of them come even close to anything like InDesign or Fini Publisher. Canva has an iPad app that you could use, but there's really nothing for it right now. And our real hope is that Fini Publisher will come out for the iPad before too much longer. We know that they have been working on it, but we haven't seen any kind of demos or betas for it yet. And so we just hope that that will come out and we can get a real desktop publishing app on the iPad before too long. But as of right now, if I need to do some kind of design document work, I'm probably going to a Fini Designer, but of course it doesn't work great for big, long, multi-page documents. That's just kind of where we are in the state of iPad affairs right now. All right, that's going to do it for this video. Go ahead, drop in the comments. Let me know what you think. Let me know any ideas you have for future videos. And don't forget, if you do decide to go with a Fini Publisher and you want to be able to learn it, I have a bunch of courses linked in the description of this video that will teach you how to use a Fini Publisher. So go ahead and check those out as well. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe. We'll chat in the comments and I will see you in the next video.